Right, folks, for our final panel on the sports NFT track, we've got creating real-world sports experiences with NFT utilities. So, Travi, Mohammed, Nick, and Darius, welcome to the stage. Round of applause, everyone. NFT London, what's up? What's up? Woo! It's been a long day. I know it's been a long day, but we're here for it. So I'm going to start this off the same way I start every podcast, and that's ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, and DGENs. We are live at NFT London with this crew right here. We got Mohammed, Nick, and Darius, and this is all about sports utility. And one thing that these three men have in common Yes, besides the fact that they're all very studly and athletes, one of the things that's going to really bring it all together is the fact that they have some really great real-world utility that's already being used and are finding the use case for it by bringing it over to the blockchain and not an NFT company that's saying, all right, we got to drop a project and then we'll figure out utility later. So that's going to be really interesting to hear. Let's introduce ourselves. Let's first start with Darius and we'll go to Nick. We'll go to Muhammad, tell everybody what you're working on, and then let's dive down the rabbit hole. Right. Can you turn it on? You got it. I don't think this is, oh, oh this is on, okay. I'll just take this, thanks. Hi everybody, my name is Darius, and since my last name as a German is pretty much impossible to pronounce, let's stick to Darius, that's probably easier. Um, I'm the CFO to a German basketball club called Ratze vom Ulm. Uh, we are the leading uh, basketball youth development program in Germany. Um, and thanks to one of our founders who is pretty much an NFT and crypto geek, um, we have been pretty much involved into, into that space uh, for a while now. Um, and, but I will get into what we're doing. We're trying to bridge uh, the space between Web 2 and Web 3, uh, but I'll get into that a little bit more later on. Yeah, what's up guys? I'm Nick Humphreys. I'm the founder and CEO of Train Effective. We're the number one football training app in the UK. Um, we are the leading uh, uh, football education, sports education brand on social media. Um, we have over 2 million followers on TikTok. So yeah, we're doing decent in, uh, in Web2, but um, we really want to transition to a Web3 first company. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that we're exploring and just yeah, excited to be on this panel. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say uh, thank you for joining us on this graveyard shift. <laughs> it's, it's been a long day. I understand, and uh, so thank you for sticking around and listening to us. But my name is Mohammed. I'm a, a lecturer in football business and marketing, and I've been teaching this for over 10 years now. Um, I'm based at the Etihad campus, and I'm an advocate for Web3 and, and, and the metaverse, and I'm finding a lot of resistance in the football industry at the moment, is it's been extremely difficult to uh, advocate the next change which is coming and is going to impact the future of fan engagement. Um, therefore, I'm, I'm currently researching a lot around this subject and trying to publish a paper to um, support and, and help football clubs to adopt Web3 technology and, and, and metaverse, which com comes along with it. Absolutely. So one of the things that really got me as, as a personal collector to understand what NFT utility means was to actually join an NFT project team called the Diamond Dogs. And the Diamond Dogs was founded by Major League Baseball player in the St. Louis Cardinals named Evan Mendoza. And what Evan decided to do was by owning one of his NFTs, it opened up brand new pathways for fans to access his games, stadium tours, merchandise drops, meet and greets, and all kinds of fun stuff that go along with that. And that's what it's all about, the fans and community. And we use that term very broadly, right, in, in Web3, what community means. I've, I've seen a few panels today talk about how they don't like the word community because it is so broad. So let's break it down, at least in terms of sports, what a community really means. And, you know, what better community to really start off onboarding people by, than the sports community? Fans of a sports team, you don't get a more tight-knit community than that. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go to a pub during a World Cup because you'll find out real quickly. So let's talk about community and also transitioning these communities, these sports fans, these collectors, 
into what it's going to be like to now be a part of this community, but making it into Web3. So let's start with you. You have some really interesting things going on uh, in the basketball scene. And of course, we have some football slash soccer stuff coming up. I'd love to hear a little bit about what you're doing. I know we talked about it. We've got some really exclusive merchandise that's going to give access to really, really interesting VIP experiences. Yeah, thank you. Um, the idea, the idea for us uh, was to, to, like I said earlier, to enable our fans uh, to get into the Web3 space because th that's pretty much the issue. Um, a lot of people are talking about communities and like you said, sports um, ha already has strong communities. Sports clubs, sports brands have strong communities. We are no exception, thankfully. Um, of course, it's a more regional, a more uh, regional community, certainly, but nonetheless, very, very passionate uh, for the sport and, and for our brand. And one of the biggest, I think uh, we've heard that on a couple of panels and talks uh, today already, one of the biggest uh, issues for, for Web3 uh, mass adoption, max, mass acceptance, is knowledge and, and accessibility. Um, and that's that's pretty much the key factor. So we thought about a let's call it web. I think that uh, term actually came up earlier today as well. Uh, web 2.5, uh, in a in a way, we're trying to blend those two together. So we sat down with partners of ours, uh, which are actually actually present here today. Um, one of which is 80 80 20, um, a, a very fast growing and leading uh, digital agency in in Germany, uh, and Authentic Vision, um, who are in I actually can't can't even uh, begin to understand how they do it, uh, but they are creating high class, uh, secure uh, labels for for real life products. And we, what we're trying to do is we're trying to blend Web three and Web uh, two together. So what we're doing is we're taking uh, jerseys from our club, um, having those labels on them, and with these labels you have access to the digital right behind it, basically an NFT. So the jersey itself. Uh, the special version of our jersey becomes a real-life NFT. So what we're trying to do is a little bit of a different approach. A lot of projects right now, um, they give you an NFT and say, now you have the right to get the merch as well, or they do it the other way around. And we just try to do both at the same time. Uh, so what you get um, is, for example, the same way that a lot of NFT projects already do, um, you can get, let's say, a lifetime access for our, for our games just if you have the right jersey, if you have, the, if you have the, the mythical version, for example. So we're trying to do both at the same time, and by that, introduce our fans, our community, to the ideas and some of the principles um, that Web3 have. Yeah, I mean, um, a good point, sir, but I think w I work specifically in football, and to any football fans here, we all know how big it is. It's the biggest religion in the world. <laughs> The, the biggest, if you think about it, it's the biggest religion. And um, so there's so much potential here, especially when, w you know, with, with football, there are a lot of issues, politics, uh, corruption, all these things that Web3 can really help um, solve. Um, I think what you see, though, right now in the football space is that there's a huge amount of skepticism, especially in the UK and Europe. In the US, they're a bit more open-minded, for sure. Um, and I think we have to get over that skepticism. We have to show people what can NFTs really do? And, and that's gonna be the next challenge. Um, for our own community, uh, what our struggle with is right now with um, onboarding people to Web3 is that our audience are between the ages of say 13 to 20. So it's a, it's a young segment, um, you know, how much are they gonna want to study crypto? But what we really gotta do is show them, look, if you use our app, these are the rewards, um, the, the NFTs you can, the earn, this is a social um, currency that you have. And that's just what we really, really got to do. We got to show people that this is what you can do. This is the fun things, uh, the great things that you can do with NFTs um, and not even know it's an NFT. Um, so yeah, we're just exploring a lot of ideas and making sure they're not like Steppen, if you guys know Steppen or Sweat, where the tokenomics are, are fucked. <laughs> can I swear? I don't know. Um, and, and yeah. Sorry. And um, yeah, that's what we're looking at, sorry. So, so when I go and talk to football clubs, um, I don't think they've really understood Web 2. <laughs> yeah? Because yeah. how many 100%. of you... <laughs> <laughs> how many of you have actually had a tweet back from a football club? No. So the whole point of Web 2 was that two-way interaction, two-way communication. 
And as somebody put it, put it quite nicely, that football clubs are just like billboards. You see a fo footballer kicking a, a ball around, and that's what they upload on social media. So get them to understand Web3 it's going to take a long time. And in my conversations, talking to chief executives, um, directors of football clubs, um, all they're interested in is, okay, how much money is it going to make me? And I'm, I'm here like, it's not about the money. And, and um, here it's about the value you're giving to your fans. Uh, and, and that value will come from um, giving, giving rewards. And it's not about the NFT, I think. Football clubs need to understand the technology behind the NFT because once you've understood the capabilities of blockchain technology, um, then you can start putting, activating um, the strategies and tactics in place in order to provide real value to um, those football fans. So um, I think football clubs got a long way to go before they, they start thinking about Web3. That's actually my next question. So we talked about how fans are a big part of sports and collectors or community are a big part of Web3. So bridging that gap is what each of you are trying to do. And I guess my question is, what do you think that the fans need to know in order to, f to become collectors? Because for all of us now who are, you know, I know we like to throw a lot of terms around, but let's just say builders, right? Everybody right now, especially in this market, we're all trying to build and we're all trying to do something special. We see the next version of the internet coming along. We see use cases for NFTs. We see use case for blockchain. But a lot of people don't even like the, the term, the terminology that comes along with that, whether it's NFT or crypto or whatever. And you see companies like Starbucks calling their drop stamps. And you, you know, you see what's going on with some of the other companies not using some of that terminology. So whether it's getting away from certain terms, I think the tech is there. And so the question that I have for each of you is what do you think it's going to take for the communities, the fans, and, and Nick, with over 2 million social media followers for your company, you know, I think that this is a really great question because you're going to have to onboard this entire <laughs> kind of like cattle car of, of, of these, these people, your community, and, and turn it into not just something where they looked to engage in social and web too, but now we're going to have to look and understand the value of owning on the blockchain. So wh what's, what, is all, what is your take on, on what it's gonna be like to you know, onboard some of our web two, web one, web zero, and listen, all, all ages are welcome. But um, what do you guys think? Well, I just think about when I minted my first NFT, uh, which for me was vFriends. Any vFriends people in the crowd? <laughs> yeah, make yourselves known. Um, and and for, if you guys know who, most of you guys I'm sure know who Gary V is. Um, for me, that was a huge part in, educate, in education with NFTs. He would post YouTube videos, podcasts about how to mint, what minting was, how to open a wallet. Um, and, and that's, I think, what onboarded a lot of people into the NFT space. So I think about, okay, how can we do this for our own community? Is it gonna be through podcasts, TikTok videos? Um, you see Binance making a lot of plays right now. You see them working with The Weeknd, uh, with Cristiano Ronaldo, with Cabby Lame, the biggest TikToker in the world. And, uh, and they're doing that because they know that um, they can use their influence and use their ways of educating to onboard a bigger audience. Um, we're looking at the same ways in we just registered uh, uh, social media handles with Train Effective, but with like a three in it, so Web3. Web Haha, <laughs> very creative. Um, <laughs> And, and we're, we're gonna use that as a, as a platform and a page to educate people about NFTs. Um, and as for using the word NFT, like, I don't know. Do you, if, if anyone can share any ideas with me how, that, of how not to use the word NFT, please let me know. But well, yeah. As long as we keep it in the title of this conference, because we love NFT London. <laughs> I don't want that name to change. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Darius? Um, I think uh, I think it's mostly about trust. It's about trust building. Uh, you said it earlier um, that um, they they don't really know. They are scared. I think a lot of people are scared of what it is uh, because they don't understand, and that's just human nature to be scared of something that we don't understand. Um, and also, we have to to face the fact that a lot of people already did some scammy things. <laughs> um, so. Pretty much everybody here can tell tales about somebody who didn't really do their homework. Let's just say it like that, um, and and just try to build up something. Um, not trying to do to use the p 
keyword, the scheme word uh, that you used earlier. <laughs> um, but there, there were a lot of uh, a lot of scams uh, there, um, and that already left some scarred land, I would say. Um, so what it is, we need to build rebuild trust, um, and a lot of people that have no clue what it is and don't really look at the technology, they just look at the terminus. They just look at the word and they hear an NFT and what they think of, of course, everybody here knows that is overpriced JPEGs. That's pretty much what a lot of people uh, think, my own family included, uh, at this point. Um, and what it is is education, trust building, and of course, it's also value proposition. Um, that's that's also th something that I've heard once or twice in the in the uh, panels that we've heard here on NFT London. Um, that whoever uses NFTs, n not the n not the fact that it is an NFT is a great product and makes it worthwhile. You have to actually offer some value something that whoever should buy uh, your, your products um, actually can and should value. Uh, and I think if we come back to that, it, at some point it won't matter um, what it is called. It doesn't matter if it's an NFT or whatever you call it, um, whatever you frame it, um, great products will be bought at some point again. Um, but right now, that's, that's a, th a key issue, I think. Yeah, w one, sorry. I was just going to say quickly, one way we were looking at with Train Effective is uh, we do these camps in, the Lon in London and around America. Um, so we w we've worked with guys like Rio Ferdinand um, to do stuff on the app. Uh, one way we were looking at with the camps is what if we could turn our camps more into um, experiences for, for VIPs or um, for competitions and stuff. So imagine if you could play, if you had an NFT uh, ticket which would allow you to play um, Two Touch with Rio or a penalty shootout against David De Gea, yeah. whoever, it, whoever it is that's part of your brand. And I think you're going to see more of those experiences um, be able to happen through NFTs. Because what's great about that is that now you can have that in your wallet. I played uh, five aside with Rio or penalty shootout against, against David De Gea and won or you know, whatever it is. And I think, um, I think you'll see more of that. Yeah. I think I can only talk for the United Kingdom. So the, the average fan of a football fan is, is, is in decline, 45 years of age. Um, and here, I think that the Web3 and, and the future is not about those fans. I think it's about the next generation of fans. And the Premier League and, and, and the leagues below really need to um, reevaluate their strategies and think, how are we going to bring in the next generation of fans? So I think the NFTs, or digital collectibles may not be appealing to the average football fan because I know what they would say to me if I said, come and buy a, an NFT. Um, I, I think it's, it's for, the, for, the, for, for Gen Z and, 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 and younger, the new generation that's coming up because they're already engaged in the, a part of the metaverse like Fortnite and they get buying the skins and the avatars. And so if you can transfer that into the football industry, um, there's a really good concept called the Disneyfication of um, the football industry, and it's about how can we Disneyfy the football industry. So, um, really thinking about merchandise, thinking about digital avatars, and I feel that the, the, the football industry maybe needs to think about how it can be Disney by providing experiences like Disney provide, you know, memorable experiences, not just experiences of meeting a player or. Um, Behind the scenes content. I think that's memorable. Meeting a player, no shake. No NFT meeting a player, no. I think it's got to go beyond that. <laughs> I, I would actually uh, agree, to be honest with with, with Nick. It's, it's one thing that we would also uh, think about a lot. Um, we always call it money can buy uh, experience pr because that's pretty much what it what it is about. So meet our players, have a barbecue with the team, uh, stuff. Every time you wear the the jersey, th that special version. Um, you would uh, have access to the VIP club, and it's, it's stuff like that. Um, and it's more like the experience that you need uh, the, the jersey with the still intact label, because once you destroy it, once you cut the label out, that's it. You need the jersey with the label, not just with the label taken with you and stuff like that, um, to, to actually get access to whatever it is that you want. So I think money can buy um, experiences is actually a great access, because a lot of the uh, rewarding systems uh, hey, you get tokens that are worth 0.001 euro. I think that's a lot less appealing than uh, than experiences, in my opinion. Really great insight. So show of hands here, 
Who, uh, who's a sports fan in the room? Who's ever worn a sports jersey? Uh, soccer, football, football, sorry, football, <laughs> baseball. I know, I know where I am, I know my crap. What is a jersey as a fan if it's not a PFP, right? I mean, what are we doing? What are we doing in Web3? What are we doing on Twitter? We're wearing our PFP to support our team, right, our community. So it makes a lot of sense for sports to be one of the really early onboarding platforms for, you know, normies or whatever we want to call people who aren't onboarded into Web3 yet. But what I also like about kind of where we're at in this onboarding process is it gives us all a chance to kind of take a beat because we're in this bear market, right, or builder's market. And it, you know, I, that was a theme that came out of a lot of the panels today was how great it is to be able to build during this market. And something that I talk about a lot on my podcast, Fired Up on the Blockchain with Travi, by the way, um, <laughs> is, is that it's really important for us to put a lot of thought into this. Because what's going to happen is, yes, we know that some PFP projects um, are household names now, right? Well, in our households, right? Um, you, we all know the ones that are incredibly successful, but we all know about the ones that we don't know what's going to come out of, you know, the collections that we have. So we have to be, and I think we are, a lot more thoughtful about what we put out during this market. And that's something that I personally love, especially as a collector, because it also has helped me appreciate art more. Like the art PFPs that you don't always necessarily always ask, what's the utility? Well, sometimes the utility is the fact that you show ownership of this one of one. Like I've been talking all day about an art piece I want and shout out Kate Phillipson's in the crowd tonight, Leopard's Lunch. I really am all I'm talking about how can I claim ownership of this? Because trust me, I've right clicked, saved like 10 of her things already, but I really wanna own one for real, right? And that's really a lot of the utility and the membership component is a huge part of it. So it's kind of like as a collector side, even from the art side, it's almost like, all right, what is a community in art and NFTs? Well, it's kind of like art collectors meeting together for you know champagne and cheeses and stuff, talking about the art in a gallery. Like, yeah, in the back of our minds, we know that we could sell that one day possibly, but that's not the real reason that we bought it. And the same thing with what we're doing now, like the people who we are supporting and the collectors who we want to onboard are the people who are going to get a whole lot of use case out of your sports, you know, sports kind of hybrid NFTs. So in the final minute here that we have, I want to make sure I give everybody platform, remind everybody what your company is and why it's going to help change the future of the internet. No pressure. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> um, I, I don't actually have a company, but I'm more non-commercial. I'm looking into the research into the Web3 and, and Metaverse. However, I am an ambassador for OneFootball. Uh, they've just started their digital collectibles with the Italian League, so check them out. Um, I'm also a holder at Wagby United. If you know about Wagby United, then you know we get voting rights of uh, who, who the team should buy next. Um, and I'm involved in a number of football and sporting projects. So that's a bit about myself. Thank you. Is this where we plug? Plug ourselves? This is where we plug. We have a few seconds. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, just uh, Nick Humphreys on LinkedIn. I post every day something valuable, something you'll learn every day about Web3 or sports. So I'm, I'm over there. Uh, Twitter, Nick Humph. Um, yeah, let's change the world. <laughs> Do I still have to come? <laughs> um, st stay tuned with uh, with Ratze from Ulm. Uh, I think the idea you you mentioned it earlier to me that the idea to uh, take a real life jersey and actually make an NFT out of it uh, instead of just making a digital twin, I think it's pretty much still a unique project, uh, especially in the sports landscape. Uh, because as we heard earlier, a lot of sports clubs aren't even truly Web two yet, uh, and I think we we take that we take that step into Web three. Um, stay tuned uh, and hope sh hopefully stay excited. Listen, thank you all so much for being part of this. My name is Travi. My podcast is Fired Up on the Blockchain with Travi. And I'm going to keep doing what I always try to do, and that is bring one love to Web3. Yeah. Have a good night, everybody. Well done. Thank you very much.